Alexei Leonov said, the space racing was a very serious thing. Everybody were wondering who is going to be first on the moon. And the first voice we heard from the moon in 1969 was the voice of Neil Armstrong. He was the first one with Apollo 11 to land on the surface of the moon and make those famous steps, which were very small for a human, but fantastically big for humankind. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome astronaut Neil Armstrong. Please.
66 countries joined together not to analyze the sky, but to analyze the earth. Oceanography, meteorology, solar activity, Earth's magnetism, cosmic rays, all very interesting but mystifying subjects to most of us. High performance rockets were being developed for military use. Even before the IGY began, scientists, particularly Russian and American, soon recognized that if it were possible to use such a rocket to put a man-made object up into orbit about the Earth, carrying scientific instruments, it would have a perspective uh, that would allow accurate measurements, perhaps solving or at least shedding some light on the Earth's mysteries. Both countries publicly announced their intention of developing an artificial Earth satellite. They didn't recognize it at the time, but they had started a new competition which would become known as the space race. The space race was possible because of the development of two technologies, the liquid propellant rocket and the digital electronic computer, which just happened to arrive nearly simultaneously. The, <clears throat> the engineering progress of the 20th century made possible not only to put uh, these small objects into orbit about the Earth, but also to place human beings in orbit about the Earth. And not only that, the performance increased to, to the possibility of accelerating that human to a sufficient velocity to escape the gravitational field of the Earth. Perhaps, not surprisingly, that velocity is called escape velocity. So as far as we know, in all human history, only 24 humans have ever achieved that speed, which is about 10 times the speed of the velocity of a high-performance rifle bullet. Uh, the success, the possibility of humans traveling in other destinations suggested by these achievements uh, might put us in position to go to destinations throughout the solar system. Perhaps 21st, sec 21st century technology might provide increases in that spacecraft velocity by a factor of 100, say 1,000 times the speed of the bullet of a rifle. That suggests that we might, that is, that's enormous speed, and it suggests that we might be able to go to distant places in a reasonable amount of time. But simple arithmetic <coughs> concludes that with such speed, flight to our nearest star, Alpha Centauri, would take something like 65 generations. That prompted C.B. Cohn to define the difficulty of interacting with other cosmic societies should they exist as God's quarantine regulation. Space, as Professor Smoot so eloquently illustrated two days ago, is really a big place. Dr. Brian May, 
That same day, in a thought-provoking essay, properly asked, should we go? He selected eight or ten of men's least admirable qualities. There are many more that he did not mention. And he asked, should we really want to place these human shortcomings throughout our solar system? It was a rhetorical question, and of course, we would not. He looked on our home planet as a beautiful, benevolent, and perfectly placed location, which of course is our perspective. But I have had the privilege of looking down on Earth from a far distance, and I have seen meteorites, shooting stars far below me. I have seen the violence of nighttime thunderstorms like giant mushrooms illuminated by ferocious lightning. I've seen gigantic hurricanes with enormous winds. Were I the captain of a spaceship approaching Earth from a planet near Vega, and seen these same sights. And my instruments warned me of potential earthquakes, tsunamis, and other rages of Mother Nature. I might very well say, no, this planet is too dangerous. This planet is not for me. Mr. Spock, warp five. <laughs> uh, our treatment of our other Earth species, other Earth species was reviewed, and indeed the record is a mixed bag, uh, for there are very few gentle deaths in the wild. Humans, indeed, take the lead in protecting some of those creatures and presenting and protecting and preserving endangered species. I agree that Homo sapiens is not nearly ready to govern other parts of this universe. We cannot even govern ourselves with an adequate amount of pro predictability. But, as Newton might have said, Isaac Newton might have said, every advantage is accompanied by an equal and opposite new is disadvantage. Conversely, every problem is an opportunity. And I hope that our grandchildren at our age can look back and say, the 20th century was a century of advancement and improvement in technology. And the 21st century was a century of advancement and improvement in human character. And that may just qualify us to, as humans from Earth, to sally forth and expand the human presence beyond Earth. Not to take with us our worst behavior, but rather to be accompanied by our best behavior and be willing and happy to share it. Thank you.